The last Moto Guzzi V7 I tested was a 2014 model and eh, I didn't really like it. But this week I have a brand new 2023 Moto Guzzi V7 to test out and three questions in mind that I want answers to. First, we're gonna look at if the V7 stays true to its roots as a classic motorcycle. Second, if it does, can it actually still keep up with today's modern motorcycles? And third, has Moto Guzzi improved the V7 enough to actually convert me into a fan of this bike? I'm Adrian from Your Motorcycle. I make videos that help motorcyclists, including some pretty detailed, pretty critical motorcycle reviews. And this is gonna be my review of the 2023 Moto Guzzi V7. In this review, I'll be covering design and styling, engine and performance, handling and ride quality, technology and features, ergonomics and comfort, fuel economy and range, and maintenance reliability. And lastly, price and value for the your dollar so we can figure out if this is a bike that's actually a good buy for you. This video would not be possible, full disclosure, without the participation of Studio Cycle. They are uh, my local Toronto Prilia, Moto Guzzi, and Husqvarna motorcycle dealers. If you're in Toronto, you should definitely check them out. They are good people, they are knowledgeable people, and they are friendly people. And if you ask them for candy and send, tell them that Adrian sent you, I have a feeling they'll hook you up with some free candy. So try it, you'll see. Okay, let's start with just what you immediately see when you look at pictures of this bike on the internet. That's the, the whole look of the bike, right? This is a motorcycle that's meant to replicate the original V7 of the late 1960s. There's a lot of history behind this bike. Last year, I actually made a video here on YouTube on the history of the Moto Guzzi V7. You can check that out, I'll link to it somewhere. Uh, but this year, I personally went to the Moto Guzzi factory and their museum in Mandela del Lario in Italy on my tour of all of Italy on a motorcycle and seen so many of the original V7s in the flesh Oh my God, there it is. Made me realize, you know what? This really is still true to that original 1960 something bike that I saw over there at the museum. They've definitely kept it authentic. And you feel that too in, in the ride and the rumble and, and how the bike feels when you're on there. There's this sort of old world charm to it. Um, but back to aesthetics, the bike features the V7's uh, iconic air-cooled transverse mounted V-twin engine. And I love the aesthetics of it as I love the long flat topped gas tank and the minimalist tail section. They've, they've kept that all along and I think they did a great job with the design of the bike. And one thing that I don't have the skill to really show you on video is the fit and finish and attention to detail from Moto Guzzi is typically always top notch. Sure, some people will point out that Moto Guzzi has kind of mastered this, this art of just changing the paint a little bit here and there and then charging customers a lot more money for what is basically essentially the exact same motorcycle in a prettier color. But when you do good enough fit and finish, you can get away with doing that kind of thing. There is one part of the design though that I wish was different and it still isn't and that makes me sad inside and it's probably the reason why I personally cannot buy this bike. It's the overall size of the motorcycle. I wouldn't call the V7 small, but I'd definitely call it compact. And if you plan on doing a lot of two-up riding like we do, again, we just did a whole trip across the whole country, the two of us, one bike, the V7 might be too small for you unless your passenger is on the petite side. But if you're not gonna be doing a lot of two-up riding, that's probably not gonna be an issue for you. Since the 2014 model that I tested uh, last time on my channel, aesthetically not too much has changed. You know, new headlight, I, I don't really dig the LED eagle in the middle. To be honest, it makes my videos look crappy because it's flickering and I think it takes away from that pure circle that's kind of your old school traditional look, but it is what it is. They've also changed the dash. That I think is a nice little upgrade. We'll get into the tech stuff more later on. But basically in conclusion, the V7 aesthetically, yeah, it's a retro looking motorcycle and visually and even the way it feels, it stays true to that to, to its history, to its roots. And if you're shopping for a motorcycle in this segment, your eyes are either gonna instantly love this bike or you'll just end up buying a Triumph like everyone else. Now, if you did watch the video where I reviewed my buddy's 2014 V7, you know the engine and performance of that bike left me kind of underwhelmed, but thankfully a lot has changed since 2014. Within the next few years of that bike, uh, Moto Guzzi added a much needed sixth gear. They gave it a new clutch. They added a higher rev limit and they even lowered the engine by a centimeter. That brought down the center of gravity a little bit, which gave for better stability and better cornering. But in the 2020s is when Moto Guzzi really started to shake things up. There were some minor but significant improvements in help with performance, like new front and rear suspension, some ergonomic changes, but really the biggest and obviously the best upgrade to the bike was that 850cc motor from the V85 adventure bike. They stuck it into the V7 and that really changed things. They, that brought the V7's power up from 52 horsepower to 65 horsepower and it takes the torque from 44 foot-pounds to 54 foot-pounds. That's a 25% increase in horsepower and a 22% increase in torque and guess what? You definitely notice the difference. The bike doesn't feel so stressed. It doesn't feel like it's in 
need of shifting as much, uh, it's, it's a great improvement. And if you're thinking about buying one of these bikes used, well, I'm not gonna say don't get the 750, but if you do get one of the bikes with the 750 motors, make sure that the savings is substantial enough to make it worth missing out on that extra power, that extra torque, that extra smoothness, that extra gear in some cases, because it really is that much improved versus the bike from nine years ago. So if you can get even a used 850cc V7, I think you'll be really, really happy. Hopefully you can kind of find that sweet spot. Now, the last time I reviewed the V7, I said there's some very electronic-like whirring sounds coming from the bike, and unfortunately that is still the case. Bit of a distraction from the nostalgia of riding a motorcycle that's supposed to be paying homage to a classic. I'm not crazy about that, but there is a silver lining to this. I had a customer with the exact same motorcycle and he had a stage one kit done. So he had the air intake, the Mistral exhaust pipes, and he had, I guess, like a, a retuning for his bike done. And that thing sounded amazing. That's definitely money well spent um, doing that stage one kit. It'll sound amazing. Of course, we can't talk about performance and not mention the fact that this is a shaft drive motorcycle. And if you are an owner, you're gonna love that because you change the shaft drive oil once every two years. Anybody with like one wrench can do it themselves. There's no filter. There's very little chance of making a mess. The only real cons of shaft drive are not being able to change your gear ratios and the extra weight. But at 480 pounds of wet weight and a low center of gravity, this bike already kind of feels lighter than it is. And I think especially with the newer motor, it doesn't have short gears anymore. So I think the gear ratios are totally fine. I don't really see a downside to having shaft drive for 90% of the type of riders who are gonna be buying the V7. And also finally, I just wanna point out, the shaft drive this year feels very smooth. I didn't notice it coming on and off like I did when I was riding my buddies 2014. They've really smoothed that out. So yeah, props to Moto Guzzi on the shaft drive on this bike. So what's it like actually riding this thing? The V7's tank is a little bit narrower than what I was used to, especially compared to that Z900 RS behind me. We'll talk about that later. But once you kind of wrap your head around that and wrap your legs tight around that, you will get used to it pretty quick. The V7 has a low center of gravity. It's got neutral ergonomics. Wheelbase is only 57 inches. That's that's pretty short. 28 degree rake, 4.1 inches of trail. It all comes together on a 190 18 front, a 150 70 17 rear. And if none of what I just said makes any sense to you, don't worry. Uh, just expect comfortable, easy handling. Speaking of comfort, the suspension is perfectly adequate for the job. There's nothing spectacular about it. You get a non-adjustable front end on 40 millimeter forks. On the rear, you get twin preload adjustable rear shocks, and it's totally fine for basically probably 90% of riders who are gonna end up buying this bike. For a better upgrade, I think there's a Cafe Racer trim which comes with Olin suspensions in some markets, so if that's kind of your jam, you can look for that, but whatever. The same thing can be said for the brakes, by the way. You know, all the parts are there. They all work just fine for what like 90% of the people who are gonna buy this bike want from it. The other people might wanna be upgrading little components here and there. Totally up to you. I think it works just fine. It's just nothing I would write home about. One thing I would write home about is how well the V7's kind of narrow little size and swell physique is for just lane splitting through the city and squeezing ahead of the pack and then it's cool because once you get to that front of that lineup at the red light you just boom hammer the throttle and it's got all that torque it just goes instantly you pass ahead of everybody and it's not that i like speeding on the bike it's just that i like being able to get through and then get ahead and give myself that space all around me for safety this bike was really great for a community in the city on the highways too things are much improved with the new 850cc motor over the old 750 especially having that six gear really really nice tall gears lots of power i enjoy it also we talk about tour around this bike a little bit later in the video so that's coming up too and with the ranges and all that stuff we'll get into that First though, let's talk about uh, technology and features. What I found was kind of funny and cute was if I looked at Moto Guzzi Canada's website and I looked for like technology and features, there was no mention of it, right? Like, it, like nothing. They didn't say anything about it on the V7's webpage, which I thought was kind of nuts. Luckily, I went to Studio Cycle's webpage and they were a little bit more attentive to detail. Thank you, Sabina. Uh, and it did mention that the motorcycle comes with standard double channel ABS as well as Moto Guzzi Controllo di trazione or something like that. Basically, it's it's Italian uh, traction control, so cool. You also get a gear indicator, which I couldn't care less for, and you don't get any smartphone integration or any of that gimmicky tech, and uh, to be honest, that's that's just the way I like it. If you've never sat on a Moto Guzzi V7, 
go and sit at your kitchen table. The way your ankle is bent, the way your knee is bent, the way your hip is bent, the way your back is straight, it's pretty much the same as sitting on a, on a V7. It's also within a couple degrees, basically identical to the Triumph Bonville ergonomics as well, which if you're shopping for one bike, you're probably also considering the other one, so that's why I'm mentioning it. The V7 wouldn't be my first choice for a long distance tour. However, my friend Glenda has taken hers across most of Canada a few times, and she's actually currently riding hers from Toronto down to Tail of the Dragon. So if you're stubborn like she is, you can take a V7 anywhere. If you didn't want to go touring on it, the uh, Moto Guzzi has a really affordable comfort saddle of option available. It's only 275 bucks or about $208 American. If you plan on doing a little long distance touring, that is a really good investment. A good seat is always the right choice, especially at that price. A windscreen would also be a good upgrade for you because being a naked bike when you're on the highway, the V7, you're taking a lot of wind to the chest and that will tire you out a little bit prematurely. But if you have that windscreen on there, It'll just keep you, you know, a little bit more rested. And again, to touch on this, sorry, but when it comes to passenger comfort, as I mentioned in my original V7 review and earlier in this video, the bike is just too small for a lot of two-up riding. Unless your passenger is within like five foot and a few inches or so, there really isn't much room to comfortably do, you know, very long rides together on this bike. It's doable for short stuff, but I wouldn't want to have a passenger on there for more than half an hour, just for their sake as well as mine. One of the visual strong points of the V7 is the fuel tank, which has this angular style compared to the bulbous cur curvy gas tanks that you'll find on like the Bonville. The sharp lines are a true reflection of how the V7s looked decades ago. All the ones I saw at the museum had basically the same design to them. The tanks nowadays hold five and a half gallons or 21 liters, and Moto Guzzi claims 48 miles per gallon. That would give you a range of about 250 miles or about 400 kilometers, and that's pretty good for an air-cooled motorcycle. I, I think that's actually really, really nice. Maintenance and reliability is always something people ask about when you're talking about Italian motorcycles. Uh, honestly, with the V7, I think repairs are more likely going to be due to rider error. There's one exception to this, though, that I feel like I would be disingenuine if I didn't bring up my frustration about, and that's your valve clearance checks, which is, you know, you're gonna, it's not hard to do, but a lot of people aren't going to want to open up their motors themselves. On the V7, you're doing this every 6,000 miles or every 10,000 kilometers. I find this annoying because the valve clearance checks on the Triumph Bonville, you can go twice as long before you have to do them. And on the Kawasaki Z900 RS behind me, you can go four times as long without having to do your valve clearance checks. I think this is something that Moto Guzzi will change in the future. Maybe, we'll see. So I'm of mixed minds about this because I feel like if you do keep your bike for the first 10,000 clicks, you're not gonna mind doing a valve clearance check because at that point you've probably fallen in love with the thing. But I also feel like, yeah, it would be disingenuous if I didn't also kind of mention that observation that I noticed because it did pop out to me as being a little bit meh. In terms of reliability, if you did have concerns, I mean, one thing to be mindful of with Moto Guzzi or any brand really is they might not have the dealer base that other companies do. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you do have a dealer close by just in case anything does hit the fan if you are gonna be doing a lot of miles on it. Now, I wouldn't be concerned with reliability at all, really, but if you buy it from Studio Cycle, you will get a two-year manufacturer warranty with the bike. For an extra 775 Canadian, about 585 US, you can extend it to a three-year warranty if you want to, or if you've never met a psychiatrist that couldn't keep up with your level of anxiety, you spend 1450 Canadian, or about 1100 bucks US, and you make it a four-year warranty. Personally, I would save the money. Two-year manufacturer warranty from just buying a new is, is plenty good. Honestly, the V7 is a simple, reliable motorcycle. It's not overstressed. It has attention to detail. It's hand-built in Medella del Ladio, where employees, not just employees, actually, the whole town takes a lot of pride in the company. They put a lot of pride in their work. If anything's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong at the first, like, you know, six months type thing. Um, and then probably never again for a long time. I wouldn't worry about it. <music> Now we're kind of in the money part of the video where we'll talk about value for your dollar and whether or not I think you should buy this motorcycle. So a 2023 Moto Guzzi V7, I don't know where you live, but over here it'll run you about 12.7K to 13.4K Canadian, depending on which trim and paint job you get. Out the door, you're looking at about 14,000 before any rebates. In other words, you can pay 1,400 bucks more and look like everyone else on a Triumph Bonville, or for the same money, you can buy the V7 and do that stage one kit I was talking about, or you can just buy the V7 and just pocket the 1400 bucks. Good options to have. And yes, the V7 is a little over $3,000 Canadian, more than a Royal Enfield. It's not the prettiest motor, chrome exhaust pipe, and then like polished 
side cover casing and the motor itself is like gray <laughs> and part of the cylinder is black and then it's gray and then it's polished again but in my opinion these two motorcycles aren't even in the same league uh the power the torque the fit and finish the quality components of the v7 compared to the 650 enfield interceptor it's 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 a night and day difference. You, you can't even compare them. If you do want something of quality, but the Triumph seems a little excessive, you won't regret the V7 for your dollar as a first or second motorcycle if retro is what you're looking for. So looking back at those questions that I started with at the beginning of the video, yes, the V7 totally holds true to its roots as a classic motorcycle as best it can, and it can still totally keep up with today's modern motorcycles. I'm actually finally sold that the V7 is a nice option for anyone looking for a retro motorcycle. I can say that now. I was kind of meh on the 2014, but now this bike has outgrown and corrected nearly all the things that I didn't like about it. It's got more power than ever before, more pep than ever before. It looks just as sharp as ever, minus that weird headlight thing. I still find shifting around neutral to be much improved, but still a little weird sometimes. Let me show you how easy the V7 is to get in first gear. Nope. 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 I still can't recommend it for two up riding. It is a fun, nimble, capable, attractive motorcycle. Now, I won't be trading my Kawasaki Z900RS retro bike in for anytime soon, but that's a whole other beast at a whole other price point. If you want to see a review on that, hit the subscribe button. If you found this video interesting, helpful, whatever, please, please, please hit that like button. It helps me very much with growing my channel. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Ride safe, but have fun. Peace.